Darkness one. Let's go. Miniaki Ariva is known and loved by most Yogi students as her compassionate and caring sports physician. However, there is a side to him not known by most. He is an intelligence operative of the highest caliber, even by the standards of this Tokyo. He makes his living by constantly staying one step ahead of the city's various organizations, making up for and knowledge of what he lacks in combat skills. He owes all this to the sake of artifact uh, from the world of the Divoloka implanted in his right eye socket. There are many names for the power of this eye grants. Clairvoyance, Second Sight, the Divine Eye. Once it belonged to one of the four heavenly kings of the Divoloka, Virupaksa. Distance did not concern him. No information could escape his gaze, and all secrets were his to know as he pleased. One who sees a future has nothing to fear. They can adapt to and prepare for any impending threats. That is why, no matter how many times this game between world representatives have played out, Miniaki has always survived. That's interesting. However, there is darkness lurking in this Tokyo that even his divine sight cannot penetrate. A role in the role of one who takes precedence over Virupaksa in their hierarchy. That is none other than the world representative of Divaloka. Mahakala, the great black one. A darkness deeper than any shade of midnight. A void that devours out light. If living creatures fear what they do not understand, then Mahakala is surely the most terrifying entity in all of Tokyo. What form does this being take? What is their rule? What is their role? What do they desire and despise? None could claim to know. Some hate say Mahakala is savage and cruel, and that he treats other transients as mere tools and playthings. Others say Mahakala is gentle and wise, and there are none more compassionate in, in this Tokyo. Rumors swirl, seeming to describe incompletely different, uh, describe completely different individuals, and inconsistencies only adds to the confusion. A short while before Shira and Moritaka's arrival at the underground auction house. For the last time, Mishigoro. Perhaps it's not a place to say this, but if you get involved, you could end up hurt or worse. You have no idea of the dangers. I know you want to get your friend back, but that's not a go good reason to go charging in blindly. It's darn good reason. I ain't gonna just sit back and watch my friends vanish. No siree. Yes, you is always fucking his nose into my business. Clean your room, Ashigara. Watch your socks, socks Ashigara. And now you're telling me straight laced blockhead shut, just shut up and transferred. Without a word, this whole thing's fishy. I bet someone took him for a sucker and he never even saw it coming. He's probably blubbering his eyes out right now. And the cops don't give us a rat tail, so it's down to me. I'm gonna bring him back for all of you, Yogi. Miniaki greets the student's anger with a gentle smile. You aren't giving up, are you? Even though you know nothing about what the city's really like. You really don't have any fear. Uh, no, that's not quite right. I see that it's quite the opposite. Very well. If you won't be persuaded, then take this. You'll need it. Miniaki hands the student a slip of paper. It is an invitation to the underground auction house. Huh? The hell is this? Hopefully you will find some clues here that will lead you to Yasuyori. Just be warned. Ah, never mind. Forget I said anything. Just know this, Ashikura. My students are dear to me. I never want harm to come to them, and that's the truth. Miniaki, the good doctor. Mm. Hello. Well, if it isn't my favorite Tengu. Perfect timing, too. That's what mine say for you. Anyway, it looks like you're right about superintendents links to Penitentiary Academy, and that's not even the worst of it. He's been sending out phony officers to arrest transients so he can sell them back on black markets. He's got a powerful backer, too. A transient called Hakala. Yep. The Diva Loka World Representative. As for the relationship between Mahakala and Tuscali Poco, Penitentia, I'll send you all the data I've got. Associate parties, auction dates, 
all of it. In exchange, I want... Yes, exactly, just like we discussed. Well, it sounds like I've done the all to me. A pleasure working with... Hmm? Oh, please, no need to worry about me. Well, I won't deny it's a dangerous game. Now I'm a quadruple agent, at least. <laughs> oh, boy. If I'm going to do this, it'll mean making enemies out of my own guild and the three true guilds all at once. No need to worry, though. I'm used to it. Who, me? Not at all. If you want to see true bravery, you should look at my students. So in the end, all he's trying to vouch for is really his, uh, his students. Not for the agents, not for the three true guilds. He's not playing for any of those teams. He's just being a faithful doctor slash student. That's quite kind of him. Of course, I think I'm going to have to head underground for a while. I'll leave the dirty work in your capable hands. After all, I'm no use to anyone on the battlefield. <laughs> Look at all this shiny stuff. This place is way too fancy for me. Oh no! Wait, did he get caught? I thought he was sneaking in. I thought he did sneak in six feet. Hey, cry baby! Hold it together! You're making a scene in front of the guests. <laughs> I'm sorry! Wait, you've got it wrong! I'm not a- Hey, come back! Let's take it for a security guard already. I mean, I'm not cut out for the high life. <laughs> I see. So he did sneak in. No! Come on, Shulano! You've got to face your fear sometime. You can't spend your whole life hiding behind Mistress Hawkman. Remember, you're here for a reason. Mistress Hawkman trusted you with a very special mission. Shalal grasps his trembling tail and sets off with renewed determination. I wonder if there's anyone here right now. That'd be nice. Wait, is that? There's no way. Tsukiyomi enters with the grandeur of a shaft of moonlight descending the two halls. All eyes in the room converge on him. Oh my goodness, is that... that Tsukiyomi? Me Tsukiyomi! Oh, what a stud. Ugh, the king of the knights looking fine as always. Maybe if I make a good impression, he'll take me out to dinner. <laughs> good evening, Tsukiyomi. You're looking stylish this evening. Say, have you heard of the latest news about... God, imagine being squashed by their bellies. Oh please, that's so last week. I've got some tea that's stuff piping hot. Let me tell you about it, wake sister. It seems like the representatives from the war are already here. They're loading the transients they bought into their trans purposes as they speak. At last, a lucky break. It shouldn't be too difficult for you to Tetsu and Suzuka. Slip on board one of them. And I'm sure you'll find your guildmaster and the rest of the outlaws waiting for you at your destination. <sighs> you make it sound too easy. I already supposed to get past all these suits. I'll create a little distraction for you. All you have to do is wait for your chance. I know it must be very scary, but I'm sure you can do it. Already? Then without further ado, it's showtime! I am Sergeant Yasuori Yonota of the Pendant Century Academy Education Division. We have come to secure the recruits you requested. Mm. The auctioneer looks on Yasuori as Yasuori goes through the procedures with robotic detachment. The Canisarian is here to procure new recruits for Penitentia, which is in dire need after the disaster on the southern front. To watch him mechanically carry out his duty, one would never think he was facing the very man who sold him to the warmongers. Oh. Uh, I forgot that detail. Did they mention that? Yeah, I feel like they mentioned that, uh, maybe him misremembering, but... <laughs> 
feels nothing as he works. He follows his orders, as Roll does not require him to think for himself. After all, he knows well that resisting the Endless War is far beyond his power. His stony face doesn't do so much as twitch as he watches the new recruits being loaded into their prison bus. Until he comes face to face face with the impossible. It can't be. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Ashigra, what are you doing here? These must be the recruits of, from the auction. I did wonder what happened to them after the commander tossed them in his mirror. Shenog Sirin dances as he speaks, deflecting blows after blows from the oncoming outlaws. He has no way of telling them how much time has passed inside the world of memory. From his exhaustion, Shenong would estimate he has been fighting for several days, but he dismisses the thought as he injects himself with a dose of stimulant. That sensation means nothing. Time behaves strangely within closed spaces. Perhaps only a second has passed in the outside world. Perhaps uh, has already been a day. No wonder we didn't find the outlaws earlier. Whoops, a daisy. No daydreaming on battlefield. It's actually not against enemies who could have my guts for garters. It's a good job I haven't lost my mind like the others, or I would have been in pieces long ago. Huh? Tetsuax, it's me, Yobu. By the luck of that, I'm guessing these are friends of yours. You gotta learn the battlefield is not the place to sympathize with folks who want you dead. Why have you gotta act like that? Damn it, you're dredging up memories of some idiot I used to know, and it's trying to make me see red. Fine, we'll do this your way, Arthur. Shh, hang on. You're bleeding. Shenong grimaces in pain, and then his lips curl into a triumphant grin. Gotcha! She was thought twice before standing downwind. Blood sprays from Shenong's wounds, getting in your foe's eyes and mouths. Their lips twitch and their movement slow. Jeez. Three tickets to Slumland, climbing right up. Doctor's order! Ugh. That's that. See what happens when you don't have an apple in day. <laughs> hey, hey, get off. If my blood gets on you, you'll end up. Totally. Fine. Why the hell aren't you on floor right now? Come to think of it, my blood didn't exactly keep you down back in penitentiary either. Maybe it's got something to do with that rule of rending. Shannon recalls your battle after you escaped from the infirmary, in the peculiar light that shone from your sword. Anyway, you can think about that later. Right now, I just don't want you rushing off into any more danger. This is my advice as your doctor. I want you to take it seriously. Can you do that for me? Yeah, I could've guess you'd say that. Sometimes I wonder why I even bother. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll stick a fork straight into the next empty socket we find. <laughs> I'm sensing uh, some, uh, with some Zhao vibes from him. But you've got to be getting the ID by now. I mean, just look around. Shannon makes a wide gesture to the ruins of Tokyo surrounding you both. Lingering smoke and the sounds of battle drift on the wind. Gunshots, screams, and the clashing of blades. Back in his home world, Chang had seen this exact saint more times than he cared to count. In this Tokyo, trapped in this never-ending game between the 23 world representatives, is no different. This war is going to happen again and again and again. It's never gonna end. It's just the way the world is. There's nothing you can do about it. Just give up and save yourself the pain. Shenong stood once in your shoes, listening to those very same words, and having his eyes open to those very same truths. Now things have come full circle. His hands tremble as he continues. You've got to put yourself before anybody else. Can you do that for me? 
I'm sorry. I can't. Why, Arison? Tell me. Because of your friends? Because of other folks begged you for help? Is that it? To hell with that! Your life doesn't belong to them. It's yours alone. Don't you dare sacrifice yourself for anyone else. I've seen of that or enough of that already. In his mind's eye, Shang is back in Penglai, collapsing into the dust at the end of his lonely quest to change the world. <sighs> You're right, Shenong. What? There are many reasons you have helped others. Many reasons for which you strive to change things for the better. But everything is based on one idea. That thought drives you honored, even now. I'm not here for anyone else. I'm here because I want to be. Many are the hands you have taken on your journey. Many are the hands that have taken yours in turn. Many are the wishes you carry on your back, entrusted to you by friends who could not follow. But at any moment, you could have turned around and walked away. No one is forcing you to compete in this endless game. You're free to toss away the controller, shut your eyes and close your ears. Yet here you are, fighting against forces far greater than you. If there's one thought that keeps you going, it would have to be. I want to see what's outside the walls. You have never acted in your hopes of answering anyone else's expectations. Your own desires have brought you here. No one else has given you the right to tell you to give up, and no one else can give you the strength to press on. At that moment, a blinding light erupts from your sword, turning up the surroundings with its brilliance. It blasts skyward to illuminate the ruins of Tokyo and the heavens themselves with its dancing colors. This light, it's just like before! The aurora splits the sky, a war banner heralding a final end to the, in an endless world. Once, in his ignorance, Shenong fought to bring an end to the endless wars that plagued his home. He was brash, arrogant, foolish. He thought his own stubbornness would be enough to take on the entire world. Dimly, he recalls his fear, his terror. His conviction stemmed neither from efforts to save loved ones nor from some sense of higher ideals. A world of never-ending war simply seemed wrong. He refused to accept that was how things should be. In his heart of hearts, his was a selfish crusade. There's a strong message here in this entire game about owning up to your own desires. It's fine to say, you know, I fight for my friends or something like that. But in the end, it, like, that's just kind of passing the buck. You need to take responsibility for, like, the actions you do. Like, sure, you can do it to save your friends and all that. But in the end, it, it wasn't because, like, your friends told you to save them. It was ultimately up to you. And I find that admirable. Uh, the idea of just... These things that seem noble and all that, not to place them on some higher noble pedestal, and instead to just say, you did it because you wanted to. There's not, no greater truth to it than that. Now Shenlong sees his younger self and this, this human so desperate to rush onto the next battlefield. It's all the more reason I can't let you die alone, damn it! And he knows the only thing awaiting him at the end of the road is the same lonely death he suffered. So, I'm gonna do the only thing I can. Shenong's next words have been a long time coming. They are words he wished he had heard during his days alone on the battlefield. Words he wished he had been able to say himself. You can't die alone if I'm with you. As I said before, if you've already eaten the poison, you might as well lick the plate, yeah? You mean... <laughs> I don't need to spell that for you, do I? Yes, I'm telling you that I want to help you. We're going to end this war, together. Shenong. <laughs> Shenong strokes your head as he holds 
your body tightly to the chest. You put on a brave face back there. Well, it's no good to keep your feelings all balled up. Sorry, Archie, but I'm taking Shonon. Although, maybe a regular dose of close contact could be just the medicine I need. Look around. Everything you see here is part of the Scotty Poco's memories. Your friends, and you, your consciousnesses, have been swallowed up by his network. And now we're trapped inside our minds, slowly poisoned by the memories of battle all around us. It's like our flies caught in a giant spider web. Thankfully, we got a trick up our sleeves. What do you mean? In the distance, you can see Jacob and R19 making their way to you, guided by the light of your sword. If the commander wants war, we'll give him all the war he could ever need. Let's go! It's about time we gave him a dose of his own medicine. I wonder how many times he, how many puns he has related to giving people a taste of their own medicine. <laughs> Gotta love the Life Wonders formula for a character. Uh, you know, tragedy mixed with puns related to their gimmick. <laughs> light in the darkness too. This is an old but dearly cherished memory. Outside the Sumo Club Room at Shibuya Awards renowned Yoyogi Academy. At the chime of the final bell, a wave of students fetch their bags from their lockers and set off home. Club time is already over for the day, and an announcement over the PA prompts any remaining students to leave the Academy premises. <laughs> Take this! <laughs> Oh. Oh. Yes, Yori dives into Ashigaru's headlong charge, grabs him by the waist, and sends him flying. Ugh. I'll let you have that one. Thought you want to be first to twenty. Right, one more. Ready up, or I'm gonna toss you. We should call it here, Ashigaru. The bulls already rung, and we still have things to clean up under ring. Sumo first, cleaning second. We'll have plenty of time for that after you kiss the dirt. That's enough. You should know better than to break school rules. Yes, Yori grabs a dustpan and brushes and starts cleaning the sumo ring. Pl planning to live your whole life with that stick up your butt? You've got, you've got to sort out your priorities. Friends matter more than some stupid rules. Besides, I'm not letting you cut and run on me. Yasuri sets about tidying the room with Ashigaru and Tao. <laughs> he can be a real hard ass sometimes, you know. Like a super hard ass. I'm feeling it right now. Are you packing diamonds back there or something? Hey, Yasuri! You listening? I see Yasuri! Anybody home? Oh, hey, what's up? The terrible twos am at it again. You know it. Don't they get tired of the same routine all the time? I'm honestly kind of impressed. The commotion draws the attention of the other students leaving their own clubs, and a crowd begins to form outside. Oh. Just like yesterday, and the day before, and the day before that, Ishigaru seems to have a lot of friends. I don't mean just like, you know, they're all from the same school, but a lot of direct uh, interactions with specific characters. Like with him and Gunzo and uh, uh, him and Yasuyori and uh, him and I guess those are just those two, but they really seem close. And they're usually in a group with the other two, like Kuma and Gunzo and uh, uh, Dorga and all that. No one could have known that this time of happening would be so abruptly cut short. Ah! Ah! Ashigura, what are you doing here? Wait, come back! Leave him alone! Oh yeah, that's right. Yes, Yoran remembers has a slight memory with the Shigar telling him it's not his fault. Oh gee, Heat Award. I see. I presume the other officers stepped into a scene at that point, yes? Tanatoma is being briefed on the circumstances surrounding Yasuori's outburst. And he has personally requested re-education, you say? 
Despite its innocuous name, re-education is just a euphemism for immersion into scantily focused memories of endless war. I don't know, nowadays re-education seems like one of the <laughs> most uh, dirtiest things you could say. It has a very uh, sinister implication that, like, you never really hear the word re-education in any other context nowadays. Turn to his brow furrows and contemplation. What could possibly have driven Rastroy yesterday to this point? Of course, have not returned to Penitentia with new recruits. Hmm, so they're both being dragged away. Oh! Nice. <laughs> hey, Tetsuya, check it out. Aren't those buses they're using to transfer prisoners at Penitentia? Looks like one just pulled out, but you could shift half of Tokyo with what's left. No one noticed a couple of extra passengers. We're off the row of transport buses wait outside the underground auction house rear's entrance. Nice of these wrong mongers to leave a guided tour on standby. Come on, let's get going. We've got a prison to bust and friends to save. Not so fast, Suzuka. Look around. We got this place locked down tight. Squad 3 to Auctioneer, reporting in. All clear in the parking lot. Security is being tightened as we speak. Awaiting Squad 2's report now. Over. Looks like the stuffing past these suits aren't, ain't gonna cut it. We won't be getting anywhere unless we can do something about whoever's giving the orders. Ugh, what a pain in the... Hey, Tsukiyomi, you there? Listen, we've had a problem. There seems to be a, a lot fewer military uniforms around th than there are before. The warmongers must be making a move. Excuse me a moment. Ah, Suzuka. Yes, I hear you loud and clear. My, that certainly is a problem. I'll see if I can wrestle up something to help. Just hold tight and keep watch. If anything happens, call me back. After explaining the situation to Shira and Moitaka, Suzuki only starts making some additional calls. Now then, we can't let this chance by us. If we can distract the superintendent and the security, the four will be ours. If only we had something to occupy their attention while he sneaked onto one of those buses. Unfortunately, that's easier said than done. How can we distract the entire auction house? You know, there's an old saying, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and police for police. Are you there, my Tengu friend? Yes, now would be a perfect time for some Elia support. Hey, hold it right there! A newcomer approaches the auction house, and the entrance guards train their guns threateningly on this would-be intruder. You're a police, right? Guess you were the superintendent, but we're still gonna need to see you with some ID. Ugh. I ain't got none of that. Ain't got no arrest warrants for you either. More is the pity. Ah! Sorry, this music hype, and I also really like the the tenging. Uh, not, are they tenging? I mean, the 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 the, the, the dieties. Well, just the same thing. What I'm saying. <laughs> what I do have here is a whole buttload of probable cause. The very finest of what remains of Tokyo's real police force arrives on the scene. Hey, there's something. Wrong. You should be out of the picture. A concerned guest took us off over your little party here. You clan have got some good Jones to be trapping transients on our beat. I hope you aren't keeping any incidents and in civilians locked in there. Oh, heaven forbid, any of our officers. We're gonna have ourselves a little looksy inside, if you don't mind. So stand aside or. Whoa! Fire! Time to get moving. Keep fighting, don't let up. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry! Come on, head out with the guns blazing, eh? Looks like you know just how much trouble you're in. Not a good like you need a responsible adult to give him a good spanking. 
Come on, keep fire. Huh? There you go. <laughs> you kids need to go back to firing range. I could have copped three good fellas before you spotted me. <laughs> what of this old creep got behind? <laughs> what was that sound? Oh, uh, he, he wrapped an entire in a rope. Yeah, don't cut my tail. Someone help me. The way is clear, officer. Let's storm the, the place. It's time to get our friends back. Whoa there. Things not be so easy, huh? <laughs> They're quicker than I thought in reinforcements. You youngins, go on ahead. I'll take care of these dopes. Hey, it's his five star. Hey, it's his uh, festival art. It's his police uniform because his regular does is not in his police uniform. Nice. Each shot lands a clean hit on one of the guard's weapons, sending it spinning from its owner's hand. The skis was giving us the runaround. <clears throat> a single moment is all Hogan needs. The guards top to the ground one after another, tied up and handcuffed. How do you like my latest strategy, eh? This whole thing has mastered every martial art you can think of, and some of you can't. I'm Hogan Kichi of Kyo Academy, but that's Master Hogan to you. I've got your lives and your buttocks in the palm of my hand. <laughs> yeah, Squad Horn, reporting in. We got intruders at the front gate. Send back, repeat, send back up. Nice. Start evacuating the attendees, VIPs first. Squads four and six, secure and evacuate. Huh? What do you mean you've been cut off? Superintendent Daikaku tries to mobilize his forces, but it soon becomes clear that he hasn't been out and maneuvered on every front. What the devil is going on here? It looks like they know every move before we did. What the hell? Mm. Good evening, Dai. Oh, do excuse me. I forgot you go by superintendent nowadays. Isn't the moon just beautiful tonight? D you! Are you behind all this? I really do like the outlaws theme. Light in the darkness tree. Uh. Alright, looks like it's just a wide map. So more Kotar time, I guess. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's do this. Only 65 out of 70? Seriously? Alright. Let's go. Just a short while after bidding was disrupted by Yasuyori's outburst, the auction is once again thrown into an uproar by the unexpected arrival of the police. Superintendent Daikaku has mysteriously disappeared, and without his orders, the chain of command quickly crumbles. Pandemonium reigns in the underground auction house. Tatsuya and Suzuka say they'll meet us at the rear entrance. Let's move! Understood! The security forces supplied by the Penitentia Academy struggle to coordinate a response to the assault. Squad 1 is not res responding. The police must have gotten them while they took the entrance. Damn it! Okay, here's the plan. We re recover our comments, then return to Penitentia and wait for further orders. Snap to it! <laughs> Gunshots! What's happening now? Hey, you there! Stop coming to your job! Hold your comrades! Uh, me? Uh, no, you've got wrong. wrong. I'm not. <laughs> they broke the little entrance on our kid. Get up! They need you! Uh, okay, whatever you say, just don't hurt me!
A single bus remains parked behind the auction house. A pair of war on girl officers stand next to it, speaking in two transceivers. So, the first bus has arrived at Penitentia. Roger that. The last one scheduled to depart immediately. Over. Looks like security's got better things to do. Come on, Tessia. Time to make a move. Let's see what happens when you mess with the outlaws. Who are? Hey, that these will come in useful later for us thinking in. Thanks for your generous solution to our guild. Suzuka and Tetsuya strip the officers through their elder transceivers, ID tags, and uniforms, and then take their seats behind the wheel. And we probably won't be seeing them for a while because there's no way we have sprites for that. Suzuka! Tetsuya! Wait for us! <laughs> Jiren and Moritaka drive into the bus at full tilt as it pulls away. Time for Penitentiary Academy. Uh, well, I'm not sure how we made it. Indeed, Jiro. I fear I need a moment to recuperate. The pair sigh with relief as they take a moment to watch the nightmare, uh, nighttime cityscaper pass beyond the iron bars of the window. Then they turn to see the rolls of handcuffed transients they are sharing the bus with. The prisoners regard Shira and Moitaka with silent apprehension, unsure what these new arrivals might mean for them. Uh, you have nothing to fear, my friends. We are. Uh, <clears throat> my apologies, but if you would just listen for a moment. Huh? My orb is glowing. It is like it is being drawn to something. <laughs> The bus suddenly jumps forward, seeing Moritaka's orb flying from his hand and rolling across the floor. Wait! Come back! Someone! Anyone! Stop that orb! Hey, there's a break. The orb eventually slows to stop at a certain trend in his feet. He picks it up and holds it out to Moritaka. Unlike the others inside the bus, this transient doesn't seem the slightest bit afraid of the, the newcomers. There will be enough to pique Sears' curiosity by itself, but something else intrigues them. Hmm. Something about him seems familiar. Have we met him somewhere before? Ah, my deepest thanks! You have the gratitude of Moritaka and Uzuka. And I am Shira Motori. This is our first meeting, isn't it? Yeah, I just think so. Call me break. Just break. You too fancy explaining just what the hell is going on here? Shit! Meanwhile, the first boss to leave the underground auction house has already arrived at Hunter Penitentiary uh, Academy. Okay. So, this is a bit of a timer for when reinforcements will come by. The difference between this bus and the last bus. Yasiori is brought before Tiscalipoca, where he prostrates himself upon the floor in a show of submission. I have no excuse to offer my actions, Commander. I can only beg your forgiveness. What a load of bull! You got nothing to apologize for. Sorry, the Shigura. Huh? So this fence man's cult has got you, hasn't he? Oh, listen up, you blasted brainwashing blowhard! Uh, get off! Ashira makes a break for the Scotty Poker, only to be restrained by the commander's honor guard. Uh, let me go, you clowns! I'll super see you next week! Come on! Yes, Yori! What's gotten into you? First, you vanish out of nowhere. Then you show up here like acting a whole different transient. The heck happened to you? Silence, I said. You know nothing of what I've been through. <clears throat> the scouting poker glowers at the two transients before him as though the sight has some recollection inside him. 
I beg you, Commander. I need re-education. I will show my service the best of my ability. Please, re-educate me so that I may never question your orders again. Yasuyori is painfully aware that his outburst will already have been shared with all the Nintendo through the mirror network. He imagines the disappointment you will see in the eyes of his peers. Just the thought makes him tremble. No matter how his old friends might try to convince him, he can no longer return to his old life. And since he knows what he would do to them once war inevitably swallows Tokyo once more, he must remind himself of that. He must understand, in his very core, the kind of monster he is. Please. Commander. It cannot take much more. Were I to witness another such as Ikusawa, I fear I would break. Rikuro's Ikusawa. Watch out for him. Yasuyori's thoughts returned to the day he watched through the mirror as his friend was converted to the warmongers. If you were to witness that said again in his current state, he doubts he would be able to bear Okay, so he actually did see what we did in terms of his conversion. So no choice was left but surrender his mind and become an unthinking soldier. Commander, I beg you. Mm. As you wish, Sergeant. Your re-education shall begin forthwith. And should you display exceptional results and prove a shining example of our ideals, then perhaps an essential captain will have no need for a friend after all. Uh, Commander, surely you can't mean. Hmm. The ripple of the sky runs through the guards' waiting attendants. Are you saying what I think you are saying, my magnificent son? Could I haven't said it any plainer, my dear sacrifices? If Sergeant Yunuta wishes, I will expel this new recruit from Penitentiary Academy without awakening his memories of the past. Mm. Ombre Tigor bows his head obediently and says nothing more. This doesn't look like a popular decision. Uh, thank you, Commander. I am unworthy of your generosity. I will fight for the warmongers with my strength of a thousand warriors. There he goes. Damn it! Don't listen to him! Yes, you already! Black tendrils stream through the scaly focus mirror to envelop Yasuori's body like a cocoon in Dragon inside. Shortly earlier, on the border between Arima Ward and Tsunami Ward, just as the after school period is coming to an end, during which guilds are permitted to cap each other's portals. Motorway! Well, oh, here we are. Get them all out. R oh, hey, coach. Uh, I mean, warden. Countless death row prisoners disembarked from the warmongers' prison buses to march through the streets in lockstep. Transients in prison uniforms parade through Tokyo in broad daylight, and no one else is left to stop them. Both the police and the local authorities have long since been taken over by the three true guilds. Oh boy. <laughs> There's no turning back from that one. Warden of Arga escorts Balor to their destination. His student, newly re-educated by Tascalipoka, follows behind them. They are bound for the southern border of Wormong territory in a bit of to halt the invaders' advance. Okay, so uh, we saw the east coordination uh, with Carp uh, Carver versus Michael, and now we're seeing uh, some south intervention. So this is where Balor should be. Mm, I ski. I. Every officer of the Wormongs has lived through the violence and bloodshed in Rome world. Navarga is no exception. Recalling his deeds as Tokyo descended into war was certainly a shocking experience. But hard enough to shake him to the sword. <laughs> well, I mean, if uh, Balor wasn't affected at all by the situation, then you know, Abarga, who could actually see eye to eye with him, uh, should have seen kind of part core of him. However, for someone like Daisuke with no experience on a battlefield, they must have been beyond harrowing. Abarga can't help but wonder if perhaps it was too much for such an innocent child. Even so. 
Uh, at least I'm in time for one of my students. Mm hmm. Baraka looks up nice and warmly, but within seconds, his kindness disappears and is replaced by a warrior's determination. At last, the warmonger's forces arrive at the portal, dividing their territory and invaders. The industrial prisoners make to cross the border, but as they do, all troops halt. From the forefront of their line, General Balor commands them to stop. And at the very moment, the city for them twists as though being warped, shoved, subjugated, or invaded. Well, <laughs> that was quick. The general and his troops look around to find a barely organizable world. Uh, the invaders are related to memory manipulation. Maybe this is related to that. This is what it means to enter the invaders' territory. The warmonger soldiers, however, are battle hardened. Not one of them so much as Minx. Oh boy. Between them and the sunlit horizon that stands the leader of the invaders, marching on their portal under the pretext of investigating the violation of a guild treaty. That game looks like a. What's his face? Uh. Genghis Khan is also uh, a leader, too. Not just a lackey. <clears throat> The general meets his foe's gaze head on, without fear. Barely seems to register them as a threat. Is this simply the mentality of a veteran warrior? Or is there more to it? The Varga takes a deep breath, taking a familiar ascent of the battlefield, and considers things. He knows what is about to happen on this battlefield, and he can guess what might be about to happen back in the Penitentia. Playing the two options, he has concluded that Dusky is uh, best at his side. Hmm. At first, we'll come to worst. His students are safest here, where he can protect them directly. Hmm. Mm. Well, it looks like uh, Araga is looking at first students, just like Miyake is. Hey, I guess that's uh, that kind of reflects their air hard then. Uh, you know, <laughs> they're often seen as untrusty, worthy people, and you know, they're not exactly the most popular characters. But over here, you can clearly see they care about their sticks, despite. For circumstances that would lead them to, would normally put them directly against them. This battlefield is hurtling uh, headfirst towards the worst case scenario, an all consuming bloodbath beyond anyone's control. And he is helping it along. If he wants to accomplish his goals, he has no choice. However, he has no desire to see his students suffer. If he can save even one, he will do all he can. Ooh. What's gonna happen with the penitentiary? He seems to know something, or predicts, is able to predict something that's about to happen. That is his decision. That light, Varga casts a salt eight long glance at the commanding officer who will help him bring about this worst case scenario. General Barrow's face is as stony as ever. But Varga catches the giant's lips curl back in the slightest of a smile. So if you remember that. <laughs> Uh, they said that Avargo was actually pretty much resilient to whatever uh, fear Valor was giving them. And funnily enough, uh, Avargo would actually be resistant to the debuffs that uh, Avargo makes related to reducing their damage. Praise be unto the Lord. I am glad to see you're safe, Ariton. Objective. Reunite with Custodian. Complete. Inquiry. Are you hurt? You and your friends rejoice, finding each other safe, and bringing each other... Oh, they're up to speed about what has happened since we last met. Hmm. It sounds as though you would not be here if not for Shenong's compassion. Such balanced love is worthy of gratitude. Although, it is indeed wonderful that love can bring even sworn enemies together. But does this not make you a traitor? Hmm. Don't you kids worry about that. That's my problem to deal with. Hey, I'm not- I'm glad you're not hurt, but... Are you two alright? After all that thing, I mean. You recall the effect that being trapped in this looping bell had on you and how easily you lost yourself. Thankfully, we are not team to lead the way. Neither of us need to do much fighting. Affirmative. This world exists inside a network. I connected to that network and downloaded enemy location data. 
Okay. Ornate thing is actually proving to be pretty useful. Uh, it seems that the technology that the warmongers are so reliant on is actually being their damsel or anything. Hypothesis. This world is a recreation of Scott Lipica's memories. Corollary. The locations of battle are, are predetermined. By avoiding projected conflict locations, we succeeded in finding you without engaging combat. You're telling me you got inside the commander's network. Just like that. Shenong can't quite conceal the note of shock in his voice. Affirmative. Observations indicate the system of El Dorado is highly compatible with my Plan D protocol. Compatible with your protocol? Uh, care to clarify? Addendum. I have access to all communication data passing through Tuscali Poco's network. Additionally, I am theoretically capable of sending information to any terminal connected to the network. <laughs> Basically, Hackerman. I'm in! Okay. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. With you on our side, my plan might actually work. Uh, what was your plan again? What's the doctor's orders? Do you remember back in penitentiary? Your sword lit up so red it looked like it was going to split the world in two. And the pillar of light Jacob conjured shot right up through it like threading a needle. That pillar of light is what I think it is. Then you should be able to bring me back the memories of anyone who looks at it. Well, am I close? It is as you say. I should warn you that my powers might be a little different from what you are imagining. But my sacred artifact is certainly capable of restoring lost memories, even if only in part. It seems that anyone who's able to uh, use, like, manipulate memories in any way can only kind of manipulate a specific form of memory, as if it's uh, discret discretizable and uh, categorizable, like with Asus was memories of death, and it seems like more warmongers can only really touch memories of uh, betrayal uh, or, you know, murdering their friends, and it seems that's the case with Jacob as well. It doesn't have to match exactly, as long as you can help folks remember what they've forgotten, that'll be enough to. Huh? Sovereign! Anyone! Help! Just as Shenong begins the details when he is interrupted by a desperate cry for help. Was that a scream? That sounds familiar. Wait, who's that? Could that be. Uh. Yes, Yori? Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah! To merge in the world of eternal war until he completes his re-education. Yasuyori slaughters his way across the battlefield. Oh come on, this isn't a re-education anymore. Now he's just venting. He bites, oops, crushes, tears. Through his this reenactment of past atrocities, this true monstrous nature rises to the fore. He forces himself to accept that he has no place of by Ashigar's side to realize he must never be allowed to slip from his leash. And gradually, as these lessons are beaten into him again and again. His body becomes shrouded in darkness, and his mind is engulfed by the threats of the great black spider. <laughs> Warden! Is that you? The giant before him is now no ghost of memory. Standing there is the same member of Squad 26 who was taken away for re-education. The giant is bruised and battered from countless battles, seemingly on the verge of death. However, Yasuyor is no longer capable of distinguishing what it is memory from what it is. Oh yeah, that was the... He was one of the giants earlier, who was taken away. I think. <laughs> I remember something. Help! Somebody! I wanna help! Hold right there! 
more of you. More to slaughter. More to kill. Oh god, this music? <laughs> no, you can't play this music. No, not in battle. I was safe from it. You can't do this. Oh, I, I moved the wrong person. Yes. Fuck. Nope. Uh, attempt to stop for features, I guess. So close. Oh, damn it. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can do Hey, we recruited him. Safe for that. Black at W! Alright, let's just continue with Unforgettable Feature 1. Hmm. Is this as original home world? Once upon a time, there lived a man who quarreled with another. As they fought, his emotions got best of him, and he struck down his foe. He swore to never harm those he loved. He took the name Yasuyori, he who is true to the Brotherhood, as a token of his vow. He submitted himself to the command of others, for he knew that only carnage would follow if he ever slept his leash. Brotherhood, alongside loyalty and filial piety, is one of the three virtues that permit one to live support to another. Uh, with Maitaka being, uh... Let's go. Loyalty and, uh, yes, let's go. So, Tatum being filial piety, I think. Yes, you already swore to live by this virtue and become the perfect soldier, obeying the orders of his superiors without question. He had learned that when he was a monster, and, and monsters must be locked inside a cage where they can no do no harm. His orb resonates with a thin hum, as though crying for something that is, has long been missing. The clouds blink the sky, taking an oppressive vigil over Yasuyori as he wanders the dust of the battlefield. As he strikes down comrade after comrade, he comes to a realization. Perhaps here is where he is most at ease. Perhaps he belongs on the battlefield, where the only creatures left stand are monsters who could bury each other. Gradually, he has become convinced that the best thing he can do is live out his days inside these memories. So why? Just when he had resigned himself, Someone tried to pull him back out. Deep within himself, he screams. Why did Shigura have to come after him? Do not see that their paths diverged long ago. Yeah, this isn't helping him at all. 
he wants to re-educate himself, but clearly he's really being uh, torn asunder here, torn apart by the thought of Ashigra's attempt to bring him back to what This can't continue. I need more. 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 More! You must recall more of yourself, Yasuri. You cannot falter here. You must remember all of it. His field of vision shrinks, becoming ever smaller and darker. Eventually, he cannot tell who or what he is fighting against. This probably wouldn't have reached this level of uncertainty if uh, he didn't have that brief flashback of yeah, uh, Ashikara that Jacob uh, shown on him. Lost in the darkness, he blindly cuts down anything and everything before him until. Yeah! Ugh! Help! Someone! Anyone! Help! Someone stands in his way. Hold it right there! Ugh. Once more, a brilliant light bursts from your sword and blasts skyward to rent the cloud of heavens. For just a moment, a gap opens in darkness overhead. Ah, your turn, Jacob. Give me one pillar of light straight through that gap. Ah, uh, so that was your plan. Very well. I should carry it out to the best of my ability. R19, I have something to say that must be heard. Can I count on your existence? Understood. Obtaining authorization D over B plan B. Symbiosis was Alterado system elected. I wonder what is. R19 guides Jacob's. Oh, wait, now I'm thinking about it. R19 was designed by the. the from Utopia, so, you know, probably by the rule makers. So, this was. he was really designed from the beginning to be able to be, uh, you know, the key against the, uh, one of the three gods, in this case, the warmongers. So maybe it was all intended that way, and Plan B seemed to, a okay, break seemed to be another way, uh, concocted by the runal makers to actually get to the other three guilds. Although I'm not entirely sure in which way, but I mean, as you saw, Break was able to interfere with uh, the brief appearance of the warmongers in the crafters of Ocho region. Not entirely sure, though, if that really was intention in that specific case, probably not. <laughs> R19 guides Jacob's arm so that it points up towards the breach in the communications network. Towards the breach in the communications? Oh. Uh, I guess pointing towards the mirror or something. You're supposed to hit the mirror? Then the replicant connects to every terminal in the vicinity and relays Jacob's words for all here. Can you hear me, students of Penitentia? I ask only that you lend me your ears for but a moment. My name is Jacob. Some among you may know me as the former guildmaster of the Aoyama missionaries. Uh, come again? Did I hear that right? You're the Aoyama guildmaster? You gave uh, Maria quite a bit of a heartache there. However, I parted away with my guild long ago, and I have wandered the streets of this Tokyo ever since. You all share memories of a time Tokyo was plunged into war. I know this. These memories are also in my mind. Mm. Jacob's confession is so unexpected that for a moment it stops Yasiorian's tracks. I am sure that they have brought you great pain and suffering. The call to battle has turned sibling against sibling and lover against lover, as it has time and time again throughout history. But your love for each other has endured, even upon the field of war. For every tear of sadness shed in parting, a tear of joy has been shed in reunion. Or so I would believe, for if not, these loops would surely not occur at all. Time rewinds only because those who live upon this land wish it. You refuse to accept that a death on the battlefield should be your final parting. An ache to undo the end you have reached. And I have no doubt that even now, 
You cry out to halt the path you have taken, for you see to, well, lead you to spill blood of those you love the most. From the bottom of your hearts, you wish there were another way. You may believe yourself true sinners, and that is the truth. But it is not the whole truth. It is not all that you are. You can be strong, and you can be weak. You can be stern, and you can be kind. You can be gallant, and you can be graceless. Perhaps you enjoy tropical climes, or maybe you prefer the cold. Perhaps you found common ground with someone. Perhaps you found none at all. Countless possibilities reside within you. The version of yourself who stood upon the battlefield is simply another possibility. Nothing more, and nothing less. You who lament beneath this black sky, you who leave yourself trapped in this battlefield, I ask you this. Cast your eyes to heaven once more. Remember the joy that a thousand new meanings brought you. Recall the infinite possibilities that lie within you. Now I raise my voice again in prayer. I now beseech thee, heaven's high, to baptize with thy mighty cry this fist which overturns earth and sky. Blade of the Cherubim! Uh, oh! It seems like he's not risking just Yasiori, but everyone. Yo. After we've stopped to release their fellow prisoners, Shiro's group has finally arrived at Penitentia. They passed through the inmate processing facility with no difficulty before disembarking, changing into lighter clothing and finding cover. Oh yeah, <laughs> guess we don't see them in uniforms. Hmm, is this supposed to be their security? They seriously pay them just to stand around spacing out. Uh, 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 <laughs> very timely. The inmate processing facility has no shortage of guards, but they all seem to be staring up the sky in confusion. Hmm, perhaps something's gone to hell up top. Well, that or it's a trap. All like it matters, of course. And the game's long game is stacked against us. Going all in the best chance we got. Damn right! Just hang in there, Eastry. I'm gonna slice this prison to pieces if that's what it takes to find you. Huh? My orb is. Whatever is causing Moritaka's rock to resonate must be close, because it shines brighter than ever. Come on, Moritaka! We don't have much time! Uh huh? Understood! My voice! Hmm. Shit! You open the pass, R19 licked it. And now a pillar of light surges along it from Jacob's fist. Uh, cool combination. <laughs> Combo attack circle. On its way, it stirs the memories of everyone who looks upon it, including you. Fragment moments fill your head. Meetings, partings, laughter, sorrow. The stories of friendship you forged in some other life. It's the event numbers! Hello! They exist. Ay. Images of forgotten encounters and long lost friends flood your mind. It all comes back to you, your smiles, your tears, their encouragement, and in some cases, their anger. Behind every face is a life you lived, once lost through the great flood of time, but now reborn in you. Okay, so I'm not sure if it was speculation or if it was spoiler, but I already knew beforehand that uh, the MS took place in a different loop. Oh my god, stop spoiling me! <laughs> Fucking Discord server. But that is cool that they actually finally officially got it in now as like them being from other loops. Did you see anything you recognize happened? Jacob's gentle smile invites your confidence. I never realized. Just who I'd met, or how many friends I'd made. 
Well, they were pleasant memories, I hope. Many emotions came of those encounters as they were attracted or repelled one another. Joy, grief, kindness, and rage. But all of them came to an end with a sorrowful farewell, and that you cannot and will not accept. Oh, right. That is pretty sad. <laughs> I mean, I know it came true, but no, yeah, to say it out loud that those, uh, you know, non-canonical loops where, you know, events happened actually came to a tiny demise is pretty sad too, you know? It's time marathon. Thank you, Jacob. Alright, let's finish this. Everyone, charge! Mmm, fine work, my other half. I applaud your ingenuity. The scaly poker watches through his mirror as a sibling strike goes to escape his network. However, I feel you have overlooked something important. Do you recall how your previous efforts ended? The light of yours is splendid, but will bow before my smoke. It must. The hierarchy cannot be overturned. Do not presume I will show you mercy, you dear Kazat Kualu. To face you with anything less than my full might would be an insult. You will show me your power and I will show you mine. Our war ever thus. <laughs> the scoutly poker roars with laughter as his mirror once again swirls with black smoke. <sighs> the path we opened. It's closing. The rough your sword opened up and the sky slowly clouds over with the scout epoch's black smoke. Alert! Sequence supported by higher authority. Communication channels shut down imminent. Searcher. Searcher once warned you that you might be thwarted by higher keys to permanent in other worlds. Daddy? I actually forgot. As the heir of the memories of Friar, exile of Eager to Seal, you had no hope of defeating the Black Flame of West Spell. The instant you crossed blades with them, the light was stolen from your sword. Hierarchies. Are they talking about like hierarchies within the entire game? So you don't have to be within the same uh, guild uh, to actually be have a, a hierarchy imposed upon you. That is, it seems that you could just have greater power in general, and that kind of overrules your own power, probably with some sufficient extent. Other guilds obviously stronger than that. In the same way, all of the training to exiles within you are ranked below their respective re representatives in the, their world's hierarchies. Oh, it's something fundamental with the exiles in, his, uh, in our body. The result is clear. Against the world representatives' rules, the rule imbued in your sword is perilous. The light of your rule of rending is smothered by the sadly poked smoke and slowly snuffed up, just as you expected. Uh, you think I didn't see this coming? That was just phase one. All right, time to turn those on. Shasha, here I am, Master. One special summon brand secret weapon. Oh, loaded up and ready to go. What in the? Remember my substitutions? A line ring of right through the wall between. You. you think back to the day you dueled with Musashi and first truly really connected with Salmon. With little Solomon's shadow overlaid with your sword and arm, your rings overlap, and so do the hexagrams engraved upon them. Uh. In one hand, you hold your real sword, and in the other, you clutch a wavering shadow created in its image. Huh. Dual wielding, that's what they meant for. You have called upon two dragons, two rules of rings, at once, but this dual wielding technique is nothing new to you. Musashi showed you how to go further and wield two swords as one, or as you know it better. Take this! Double Dragon! Impossible! Your two swords almost spring from your hands to clash against each other, and from the collection of rules comes something new.
Wait, what? Are we in the eighth century? Where are we? This Kali Poco's memory is ruptured, and you find yourself suddenly flung out into a cool open sp space along with your allies. We must be in the firing range below Penitentia. The cadets sometimes sell training exercises down here. Which means. We made it out? We're back in the real world? Chenong looks around and finally notices the transient sprawled about the floor. All former prisoners of Tsili Poco's memories. Ugh, my bones! Blech, my head ain't trying this bad since I was a young turkey. Where are we? They all slowly hauled themselves to their feet. But see, they're snapped out. Probably in no short part due to Jake's intervention. What on earth did you just pull, Arthur? Uh, you're all safe. Thank you. Ah! You might just sword hand on the grin to haul yourself to your feet, but suddenly a surge of pain lances through it. Uh, my hand! I can't move it. 